Hi there. I'd like for you to make a PDCA uh, chart. You can use Lucid charts to do that. Now you're going to have to understand what PDCA means. PDCA means a plan, do, check, act. And please do the reading and watch the one minute video that I have linked there. For our plan, uh, we are going to choose some difference that Carlos observed in his notes from the field trip between a, a difference between the Huntington Library aquaponics garden and our aquaponics garden. All right. Now, earlier in the course, uh, with the fishbone Ik Ishikawa diagram and with the flow chart, you identified certain quality problems in our garden. And in our field trip, we found some differences between their work and our work that might solve one or more of our quality problems. So I want you to choose one difference, just one difference, and then imagine how we would go about making that difference in our garden, changing our garden to be uh, to, to use the difference that you chose in the uh, fr from the from Carlos field trip notes and then uh, how would uh, I, I want you to describe how would we go about doing that and then I want you to describe how would we go about checking that and then I want you uh, to describe once we have checked it if it worked what would we do next if it did not work what should we do differently so uh, that that uh, in that way I want you to um, practice using the PDCA cycle. Now, you may think the PDCA cycle is just common sense. Yes, you're right. I think it is common sense. But when problems are large or complicated or many people are involved, sometimes common sense doesn't work. Or sometimes different people have different ideas of common sense. And so it's very good to have a structure, uh, a step-by-step -step approach to trying one improvement at a time. And for this, we are practicing the PDCA approach. Now, you are familiar with lucid charts. You have created many or, or several beautiful lucid charts for our class. Thank you for that. I want you to make another one. Uh, I want you to use the lucid charts for the PDCA cycle. But if you prefer to use some other software, that is fine, of course. I know, uh, was it Christopher? Christopher likes to use Prezi, uh, or whatever you like. You know, you can use, you use whatever you like. The, the reason I suggest Lucid Charts is because, hey, <laughs> Lucid Charts has a built in PDCA right here. <laughs> Look at that. They have a built-in PDCA template. So uh, you can use this or, or, or not. Now, I need you to describe exactly what is your plan. So in, 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 in the plan, I need you to say, which difference in the Huntington Library are you going to focus on in this PDCA cycle? You can only choose one. For example, maybe you choose to replace one of our gravel beds with hydrotone. So we take out all the gravel and we put hydrotone and then we see what happens, right? So it's very important for you to say, to be very specific here. You know, uh, the reason why it's important to be very specific is because we want to, uh, we want to practice this cycle in detail. If you practice this in detail and go through the mental exercise of thinking very specifically, then it will be easy for you to remember this PDCA cycle on the quality exam, if you choose to take the quality exam. So, for example, for the hydrotone, I choose to replace all of the gravel in bed number one with hydrotone. That's the plan, right? But why? So. Uh, f suppose my plan is to replace gravel in bed number one with hydrotone, right? Why would I do that? Uh, to solve the problem of debris in the beds. Root debris. I'm talking about root debris. So uh, 
at, at the field trip, we saw that they use this round stuff. Stuff is nice and round. It has many pores. Pores are for growing bacteria, but we grow bacteria just fine in the gravel beds. Uh, we know that we grow bacteria just fine because look, look at this picture here. This is our data. Look at the ammonia. The fish are constantly producing waste. The waste is constantly changed, converted to ammonia. But you see, there is no ammonia in the water there. And we found no ammonia there. This was our first time checking. Uh, February 11th it was. We found no ammonia there because there's plenty of bacteria growing in the gravel of, of, of the beds. So we don't have a problem with the bacteria. But we, what we have a problem with is the, the debris. So uh, in these beds, so I, I am using the hydrotone plan. You cannot use the hydrotone plan. You have to use some other plan, okay? So in these beds, there is debris. There is, uh, it's not very visible in this particular picture, but there is root debris and there's a lot of uh, dirt and dust in here. And we believe, I, I believe that by using a hydrotone, I can eliminate the tiny pieces of roots, the tiny pieces of roots that get cut off um, when plants are moved or when even roots are growing very slowly, but they are growing, you know, because of the jagged edges on some of these uh, pieces of gravel. So the hydrotone will eliminate that. So I think that, uh, I think this is very similar to the scientific method here. It's kind of like a hypothesis that I'm writing here. So I think that there will be less root debris. I know you cannot see what I'm writing here, but uh, you can hear me, right? I think there's going to be less root debris. There's going to be more, uh, th 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 that's going to make uh, more, uh, more uh, free water, no, more even, more even water circulation in the bed and that that's going to make more even watering of the of the plants of the crops right so that's going to solve several problems so I, I i'm only focusing on one planned change and that's replace the gravel in bed number one with hydrotone and i'm saying that i should see a, a an improvement in the root debris so the, the, the root debris and it's not just root debris, you know, root debris. If, if I have root debris in the gravel bed, that's going to um, uh, capture more dust because roots are coated with tiny, tiny hairs. You probably know this from elementary school and those hairs, you know, if they are, if the root is dead and exposed to the air, it's going to capture dust. It's going to eventually cause uh, dust buildup in the in the beds. And we have seen one of those beds, at least one of our beds had had dust buildup. Maybe not this one, but uh, maybe this one. Yeah, this one. This, this, I think this is dust buildup over here where uh, the, 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 the gravel seems to be coated with a fine layer of dust, but where this gravel is not coated with such a layer of dust. So there's something wrong here. Either dust is building up here and not here or water is standing here sometimes and just evaporating leaving dust behind and it's not happening over here so there's some problem with the circulation here obviously there's obviously a problem with the circulation here because these plants are dead <laughs> uh yeah there's kind of a big problem here but anyways um uh, so my plan is to replace the gravel in bed number one with hydrotone and these are the problems i think it will solve now to do that plan okay first of all we need to buy the hydrotone so i need money so i ask for a grant from elac right or maybe i ha you, you you can choose to have a little fundraiser if your plan requires money uh like sell you know those people who sell tacos and cokes um over by the parking lot like those clubs, we could do that, you know, and, and to, to, to buy hydrotone. So th th that's part of the do, right? And then we're going to need people. We need human beings to go change the gravel out and put hydrotone in there. So I want to get five volunteers from... Now, for this, we use our SIPOC diagram. You can go back to your SIPOC assignment and find out who are the suppliers of labor. 
uh, five volunteers from the Roots of STEM Club, or maybe from the Chem 100 Club, whatever, you know. And then, so we're going to buy the Hydrotone. Now, because my do requires a purchase of Hydrotone, I need to find a vendor. And I need to find a price. All right? That's how specific I want you to be here. Why? This is all a mental exercise to feel what it is like to do the PDCA cycle. All right, so uh, let's go find some Hydrotone. Hydrotone, Los Angeles. And then I go shopping for it. And, oh, look, I can get it at Petco. But uh, I remember at the field trip they said do not get it at uh, at uh, at Petco because it's too expensive. So uh, we'll just go to an aqua hydroponic store. All right. And uh, I'm going to, I like these guys, so I'm going to call them. Yes, that's right. I'm going to call them on the phone and I'm going to ask them for their price on Hydrotone. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to need a lot of Hydrotone. So I'm looking at this photo of the bed and it looks like it might be something like uh, three yards long and maybe one yard wide. So that's maybe nine feet. Let me just, uh, maybe four yards long, huh? So just a rough estimate, 12 feet by three feet. So maybe 36, maybe 40 square feet. 40 square feet to a depth of, uh, how deep would this be? 40 square feet to a depth of, uh, that looks like a foot. That just looks like a foot to me. So, uh, 40 square feet. So that means a 40 square feet times one foot. That's 40 cubic feet. So I want 40 cubic feet of hydrotone. So I'm going to call them. I'm going to call those people at this store and I'm going to say, Hey, I want 40 square feet of hydrotone. Can you, I mean, 40 cubic feet of hydrotone. Can you give me a price please? Right. So you're going to have to, so I, um, if for my idea, I'm going to need cubic feet. And if they don't sell it by the cubic feet, I'm going to use Google. So I'm going to say 40 cubic feet to gallons or whatever they use there, right? 300 gallons of hydrotone or enough hydrotone to fill a 300 gallon container. And I'm going to get a price. And that price is going to be, go, is going to go into the do part. So maybe it was like a hundred bucks, right? For one bed. Okay. And then I have to say who the vendor is. It's important to know who the supplier was. So the supplier that I chose was Pacific Coast Hydroponics. So I'm going to write that in there. My Pack Coast Hydroponics. Yeah, th th that's my do, all right? And I'm going to do this on a Saturday uh, at 12 p.m. Or, or some other time or some agreed upon time by the volunteers. All right. I have a bunch of typos in here, but you can't see it anyway, so no, that's all right. But I am going to see it, so please uh, don't, don't put typos in yours. All right. That's the plan, and that was the do. The do part is very specific. I have people. I have a place to ask for money. I have a price. I have a supplier. Now, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if the idea that you're going to use doesn't require a purchase, your do is going to look a lot different than mine, all right? But this is the level of detail that I want you to, 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 to get for the do part. Now, the check, how, we, how are we going to check to, to, to verify that this, this plan worked? Well, in the plan part, I have some hypotheses here. I, I, I have the hypothesis that I'm going to solve the problem of root debris, all right? So that means I need to compare I need to compare the amount of root debris here versus in a new gravel bed. All right. And then uh, I'm going to need to compare. So it says more even water circulation. So I'm going to compare the water, the water circulation 
here versus a new newly planted bed newly planted gravel bed and then uh, more even watering uh, I'm gonna have to compare the evenness of watering meaning the health of crops in this versus a newly planted gravel bed right so in order to do these checks you see I have to change the do I need a newly planted gravel bed right so this means that I need to fully replace the gravel with the same type of gravel in bed number two. I'm gonna have to do that too. That means I'm gonna have to buy that same gravel, all right? Either, so that means either I have to buy the same gravel or rinse off the old gravel from bed one and reuse it in bed two, discarding the existing gravel in bed two. Do you know what I mean? What I'm talking about is in the check part, I know I have to check, I have to compare the performance of the hydrotone bed versus the performance of the gravel bed. But in order to do that in a fair way, because the hydrotone bed is new, I have to make a new gravel bed. But in order to do that, I need either new gravel or clean gravel. So I'm going to go to bed number two, and I'm going to empty it of all its gravel. I'm going to put in bed number two some clean gravel. I can either buy new gravel, or I can just rinse with a hose the gravel that I was going to throw away from bed number one. You know what I'm saying? I remove the gravel from bed number one in order to put hydrotone in there, and then I take that gravel, rinse it off, and I put it in bed number two instead. That's going to be new gravel because it's, it's just been rinsed off, you know. So I can figure out, uh, uh, I, 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 I can either reuse gravel or I can buy new gravel. Of course, we prefer to reuse gravel because we don't want to sit there all day long selling tacos in front of the parking lot uh, to get the money required to buy new gravel. And with the, uh, with the rinsing of the old gravel, uh, we can just get some, we could just have uh, a roots of stem water fight and in the process they, they would uh, inevitably rinse the gravel so anyways the because of the because i need to check by comparison that just changed the do part right so i have changed the do part because of the check part now usually in the check part we use a chart we collect a whole bunch of data and we use a chart to uh, compare that data. We may use a control chart in, in, some, in some PDCA cycles, or we may use a Ishikawa fishbone diagram in some PDCA cycles, or we may use some other chart. Now in this case, because we are comparing, uh, I think we're just gonna use a bar chart. So we're going to uh, graph the health of the plants uh, each week on a five point scale on a line chart or a bar chart all right so we're going to have to put new plants obviously oh so new plants that means th that's another thing for the do for the do part of this cycle so uh um, place new seedlings in the beds one and two now uh, they have to be seedlings. We cannot use seeds here. We cannot use seeds because seeds take too long. So we're going to have to put new seedlings, and they have to be the same type of plants. If you're going to put lettuce in bed number one, you get to put lettuce in bed number two. Everything has to be the same except for the type of gravel. We're going to use hydrotone in bed number one and gravel in bed number two. Do you know what I'm saying? It's very similar to the scientific method. You can only affect one variable. I mean, you can only change one variable at a time, and you got to see all the, all the differences that that change makes, all right? On a five point, all right, good. And then we will graph the cleanliness, cleanliness 
of the bed each week on a five point scale on a line chart or bar chart all right now i'm not sure if we're going to use a line chart for this or a bar chart for this you know what i think it's going to be a line chart because uh if you look at a line chart um you could easily see when things go wrong. So, uh, so let, let, let's take this as an example. Suppose this is our line chart and we, 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 we observe the hydrotone bed and the gravel bed over, let's say five months, it's like 20 weeks. We have all these data points. And uh, let's say that, uh, let's say the, uh, our, our graph ends right there, right? And then the, uh, the pl the plant health on a five point score on a five point scale drops like this for the for the gravel bed but rises like this for the hydrotone bed then it's very easy to see we don't have to look at the numbers we could just look at these lines and boom uh, you were convinced you know so I think the line chart would be the best chart for, for, for this now if we were to use a bar chart uh, the bar chart would also be convincing, but uh, since we're going to be collecting data f over several months rather than um, just over a, a, a shorter period, like just like two trips, I think the line chart is better able to to show what's happening over time as you go to the right on the x-axis where the x-axis would be time. So we're going to use a line chart. Now for your problem, uh, the problem that you pick, the improvement that you pick, you might not need a line chart. You might need a bar chart, or you might just need an Ishikawa fishbone diagram, or you might just need a control chart, which would be even more complicated than a, just a line chart, actually. But we're, we're going to do this on a line chart for my idea. So no, no, nobody can use, you can use a line chart, sure, but you, you, can, you cannot use my hydrotone idea, all right? Now, uh, that's how we're going to check. We're going to compare the even, okay, so it's hard to compare the evenness. It's hard to compare the water circulation, so we're not going to do that. We're going to compare the amount of debris. Not just root debris, any debris. Because leaves could also, if they, if, if, if yeah, leaves could also be damaged by jagged edges of, um, of, uh, of, of gravel, I imagine. Uh, so we're going to compare the amount of debris in the hydrotone and we're, we're going to use a graph for uh, for showing that data and that data is going to be collected by um, us once a week uh, uh, we'll just look at the bed and look at the surface and see how dirty it is we're not going to clean it we're just going to look at it and that's it we're going to look at it and leave it alone and, and uh, that's the, 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 that's the, the, that's the data that's going to go on that graph. Now on this graph, we're going to look at the plant's health, and you know, I'm just saying that they should not look like uh, they should not look like. Can I? Is this going to go into focus? No. Okay. So they they should not look like this. They should not. Okay, that's that that has been that has been harvested, so that that, that doesn't count. That the, the plants should not look like this. Yes, here we go. If they look like this, then that gets a one. <laughs> and if they look like, if they look like, if they look like this, then that gets a four. And these are not, these are not a five. These are not watered enough. You can tell because the leaves are curling. Uh, and some of, these, some of these leaves are dying. So that's maybe a three or a four, not a five. So uh, that, that's what I'm talking about with the five point scale. Right? So that was the uh, check part and then the act part. All right, so. All right. So in the act part, uh, if the hydrotone bed is showing better results in cleanliness than the gravel bed, 
then continue the experiment for five more months. Oh, wait, I, I forgot to define the, the, the time here. So compare for five months. Compare for five months. Right? It's very important to be very detailed here. If you're not detailed, then you're, you won't take it, you won't be thinking about the PDCA cycle as an actual useful thing. You have to put in all the details here as though we were going, we're not going, we're never going to do this. But if we do do it, I mean, it, 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 just imagine that, that we were to do it. Uh, what are the details that you would need to use and that you would need to think of? That's what I want you to do here. Think about those details and write them down for five more months. So if if it's showing better, uh, so if the hydrotone bed is showing healthier plants than the gravel bed, then continue the experiment for five more months. If no improvement is noticed, or if hydrotone performs worse than gravel, then stop the experiment and replace the hydrotone with gravel. All right? So that is the act. All right? Uh, okay. Now, my act is very simple here. You know, if it works, keep on doing it. If it doesn't work, stop it. Your act, it doesn't have to be so simple. Um, in, in many cases, the act is, uh, if it works, then change another bed. Like, you, you, you may have the idea to change bed number three to hydrotone, and then change bed number four to hydrotone, and you do, you, you do the cycle again, then change number five to hydrotone until all the beds are hydrotone. You just keep on doing the cycle, little by little. You do not change all the beds to hydrotone at the same time. You do not do that. Why? Because this is, th th this is all experimentation. We don't know that hydrotone is going to do the trick for us in terms of bed cleanliness and water, even, even water circulation. We don't know that. It may be something, it, it may be some other difference that was really responsible for the better health of the Huntington Library plants than ours, you know? So, so we, we, we do this little by little and we run the cycle over and over again, all right? Until uh, it, it cannot be run anymore. In our case, in, in the case of my idea here, until all beds are hydrotone or until we have seen that hydrotone is harmful in, in, in our particular case, you know? So that is the assignment. It's not easy. So I'm giving you two weeks to do it. Thank you.